This is an iPad Air, and as you'll see here, this little metal bracket is wobbling around on the inside. And this is pretty common. After a year or two, this will typically happen on pretty much most of the iPads I've ever seen. So one of the reasons is that the screws at the top do not have any thread lock to hold them in place, so they will unwind over time. And whatever type of glue that they use to keep this metal bracket in place, it fails probably from heating and cooling cycles over the lifespan of the tablet. So you can see they got some thread lock on this one, but we're gonna go ahead and put all of these screws in nice and solid when we get this thing back together. Now, I don't wanna do a complete disassembly of this. I will link a video in case you need to see it, but it will vary just a little bit from one model to the next. So you wanna make sure that you know how to get the motherboard out of the tablet without damaging it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and skip forward so that you can just see the replacement process for the flex cable itself. Now do make sure that you peel off this tape on the opposite side and there's a little plastic piece here that sits on top of the cable. I would recommend you remove that as well as it is not going to tolerate much in the way of heat. I also like to take these little plastic things off of the cable and transfer them over to my replacement part immediately. These will help somewhat for the speakers to stay connected inside of these little FPCs. So as you can imagine, Apple doesn't generally spend money when they don't have to. So it is my belief that these are here for a reason and we always try to take everything we can off of the old part and transfer it over to the new one if it is not already included. Now, if we flip the board over here, you'll see they have just kind of a piece of plastic tape that covers the contact points underneath the charge port. And I'm just gonna warm this up a little bit and take a razor blade or plastic razor blade and some rubbing alcohol. And you can get these off pretty clean. My goal has always been to kind of make it look exactly like it did when it came from the factory. If you take your time, you can do that. And if you mess this up for any reason, of course, you can cover it up with capped on tape. Next thing we're going to do here is add some flux and we're gonna flow some leaded solder across these contacts. Now, I've heard people say that you wanna flow the solder underneath the pads here from the top, but if you take a look at the way this thing is put together, it's going to be difficult for lead to actually, actually saturate this to the point where it goes inside of the holes and underneath the flex cable. So I think it's arguable that that may or may not actually be happening but we do wanna make sure that we can conduct heat sufficiently onto the top of the cable so that when we start lifting it off, we're not pulling the pads underneath. And that's where it gets a little tricky on this one. You shouldn't have to use a whole lot of force to remove this, but there is some adhesive. Again, it kind of varies from one model to the next, but you're gonna run into sticky stuff that's holding the cable down and you wanna be able to make sure that you're pulling the sticky stuff off and you're not forcing the cable to come off the board because if it does and you pull pads, well, then we get to run all sorts of jumpers, which just really adds to the total time that we're gonna invest in this repair. Now what I'm doing is I'm just gently lifting and going back and forth with a big glob of solder on my iron and you'll kind of get a feel for it. You can see that adhesive down there at the bottom and we'll just flow these out real quick while the board is nice and warm still. And then we're gonna clean this up, get all that adhesive off, and we'll get these tinned and ready to install the new one. All right, so we've got all this old solder off, and of course the factory solder has a higher melting point, so it works a little easier if we get leaded solder on here. All right, and some rubbing alcohol will clean up that adhesive nicely. Now we will go ahead and put some fresh flux on We'll get a decent amount of solder on these because we do want to make sure that they bond nice and sturdy to the new uh, charge port.
Now I do like to clean off the flux underneath here because we want the cable to sit down and not float around. So we'll go ahead and uh, actually I needed to touch these up. I noticed after the fact, so let's go ahead and get this uh, just right. This particular flux that I was using seems like it uh, only works for a while, so I've kind of switched to a different brand since then for this uh, particular repair. All right, that's looking better. So we'll go ahead and set this in place and you can use those little square, hopefully the one that you have has got the transparent squares on either side and you can kind of align those with the little gold points. If you don't, you're going to have to judge your alignment based on looking through the holes that are in the contact points on the flex cable, which is a little trickier to do, but definitely still possible. We want to get this thing into the same position that the first one was. Now I did put flux on the outside, of course. I like to do that first because as soon as I set this down, I want to get it bonded so that it stays straight. Right now, once we've got it in position, the main thing we want to do is keep pressure on the cable so that it lays flat on the surface and then just go across this with a larger soldering iron tip so that everything flows underneath. Now you can try to draw the solder out through the holes in the cable, but the main concern here, and if you saw this when it came from the factory, is that they are attached on the bottom side. So I've seen a lot of these come through that have been repaired and they look nice and pretty on the front because you've got big... Um, you know, just rounded pads of solder all the way across the cable, but that really doesn't help anything because the only thing that's going to be attached is the cable and the board. So everything that you see here on the outside really doesn't make a big difference. So I take the flat side of my tweezers just to hold this in place. And then we're going to run across here until we are confident that everything is attached firmly. And then we'll clean it up with some 91% alcohol. The reason I do this is because the 99% will literally strip the paint off of the cable. That's not going to prevent it from working, but we want to make this, again, look nice and factory. So a lower concentration of alcohol allows you to clean off the flux without stripping all the black paint off of the cable. And now I'm just going to dry this off and then we will put the sticker back into place. And that is pretty much it. If you found the video helpful, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and check out our weekly Tech Talk live stream. Have a great one, and thanks for watching.